Welcome everybody. Good evening from Dubai. I make it 7.30 here local time, so it's time to start our webinar about the University of Northampton DBA program. My name is Professor Tim. I'm a visiting professor of international management at the university, and I also look after the DBA program locally. And when I say locally, I mean this intake where we get stu take, where students come from all around the Middle East and Africa, and some from even further uh, further afield. Um, so welcome to you all. Uh, it's nice to see I've got a nice group of you here tonight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spend about 20 minutes just going through some key points of the DBA program. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to take any questions that you've got. And if you do have any questions that come to you while I'm presenting, feel free just to put them in that question box on your, on your panel there, and I'll get to them as soon as I finish my presentation. So let's get on then. Just before I get to the DBA program, let me just tell you a little bit about Northampton and the university, because most of you, I would think, probably haven't been there. Northampton is a town in England. It's about 100 kilometers north of London. It's a very old historic town, been around for an awfully long time and appears in all sorts of different parts of English history. And just, well, it used to be just on the outskirts of the town, just on the, just on the outside of the town used to be the University of Northampton. But back in uh, just a few years ago but now, back in 2018, the university actually built a brand new campus. So it's now right in the middle of Northampton. It's an incredible campus, completely state of the art and fantastic buildings. And in fact, if I go back to my first slide, there's another shot of it there and you get an idea of how it's in a nice greenfield site. Um, and on that campus, you'll find the Senate building. And on a whole floor of the Senate building, which you'll see on the photo on the right there, there's actually a dedicated space for research students. So if you uh, do become a student on the DBA program, there's always a place for you on campus where you can work and for as long as you want, uh, as long as you want on the campus there. And I certainly do hope, as of course, when you uh, uh, being a student on the program, that you will get to the campus and certainly for graduation as well. The university, I won't say too much about it because you can have a look in your own time at the, at the website and find all about the history of it and everything else. So really did this slide just to point you in the direction of the website uh, of the university itself. But education, as you can see here, goes back an awfully long time, it goes back to the, uh, to the 13th century. But the modern University of Northampton's origins begin about 100 years. Uh, about 100 years ago, in the 1920s, when it became a technical college and various things over the years, to where it is now, the University of Northampton. And about 14,000 students and 1,500 staff. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty sizable institution, but a pretty sizable place. Right, let's get on to the program itself, though. Let's get on to what we're here for tonight to talk about, the DBA program, the Doctor of Business Administration. Now, the first question I'm actually gonna tackle is one I get all the time. What actually is a doctorate degree? Now, doctorate degrees have been around for hundreds of years, and they actually first emerged in the Middle Ages and in, in European universities as a license to teach in universities. So in that respect, they're actually very similar to what they are hundreds of years ago, uh, hundred, hundreds of years later rather today. But they've certainly grown since then and gone through all sorts of different iterations over the years. But essentially, you can consider a doctorate sometimes called a terminal degree because it's the highest degree that you can attain. Now, there are things like postdoctorate certificates and things that you can get. But generally speaking, it goes the, the, the major steps, if you like, are a bachelor's, a master's, then that terminal degree, the doctorate. And there's two types of doctorate degrees, and they differ in terms of their audience. Professional doctorates are for people who are primarily engaged within a profession. So if you go and see the doctor, for example, you go and see a doctor who will have, usually have an MD, a doctorate of medicine. Now that doctor is primarily engaged in a career, in a medical career, so we call that a professional doctorate. Uh, for engineers, there's a doctorate in engineering. For pharmaceutical people, doctorate in pharmacy. Uh, for education people who want to who work in the highest levels of education settings, there's a doctorate of education. 
So you see in all of these settings, these are primarily for people who work within those professions. And of course, for business and management people, the professional doctorate is the DBA, the Doctorate of Business Administration. So it's geared towards people who are primarily engaged within that profession. The alternative is research doctorates. And the one you're most probably most usually aware of is the PhD, the Doctorate of Philosophy. And that's a purely research-based degree where people not necessarily will be engaged in a profession, they'll be engaged primarily in some sort of a research or learning sort of an environment. So they're actually very similar and they're academically equivalent. They're both just big research-based degrees. It's just that if you did a PhD in business and management, it could be something quite theoretical. You could just come up with a new model of motivation or something. Whereas a DBA, it must have a practical applied outcome. So you must do a project that has something practical that managers and organizations can use. So that's how they sort of, in, in terms of the application, and it means, although they are research-based degrees, that means they are different as well in terms of how they're structured and various other things. But they are research-based degrees, they have different outcomes, um, and of course, they both confer upon the bearer the title of doctor. So once you're at the end of that journey, anyone who holds a doctorate degree can use the title of doctor. And just my final word on this, here's just a quote I had from, I found on allbusinessschools.com. I just think it makes the difference between a DBA and a PhD in business and management quite, uh, quite nice. So I'll, I'll read it out. So the top one is saying, PhD programs in business focus intensively on preparing candidates to conduct highly specialized scholarly research. They focus on the development of new theory in management, economics, and related fields. Most PhD and business administration graduates lead to careers as university researchers and professors or as senior researchers of business or government. Doctor of Business Administration, DBA programs focus on the application of theory rather than on the development of new theory. The, doc, the DBA, by virtue of its focus on the application of theory, has more practical application in managerial settings than a PhD. So that gives you quite a nice idea about the, the, the distinction between them. But it's not cut and dry. I know I've worked with many people in universities who have had DBAs, and they are full-time academics and lecturers. And of course, I know people in industry who have PhDs. So this is just a general rule of thumb, if you like, and, and gets you also thinking about, you know, um, why you're uh, um, uh, the one that's right for you, of course. Right, let's get on then. So that's the difference between a DBA and a PhD. What sorts of things do DBA students study then? This list is a list of topics of students, our own students who have gone through this, uh, this course. Some of them still going, some of them have finished now, and I've just picked a random selection of topics that they looked at. So you see it's a real mixture of anything business and management. We've gotten a critical examination of a performance management system, leadership styles and employee performance, an assessment of corporate governance in the public sector, assessing the value, value chain in the manufacturing business, reasons for investing in high-tech startups, resolving project complex, agile project management, and one of my students who looked at knowledge transfer in a management training setting. So anything, anything business and management, operations, finance, accounting, marketing, organizational behavior, human resource management, social responsibility, business ethics, innovation, anything business and management can be a DBA topic. Let's have a take a look at the program then. Firstly, take a look at the top of that slide. The next intake is intake 13. Uh, we have two intakes a year, so we've actually been running this program, this Middle East and Africa intake, if you like, for uh, this will be six and a half years now, so a long time now. Now, the first workshop starts on the 25th to the 28th of May. Bear in mind that is the first workshop. Applications close at least six weeks before that time because the admissions team at, at uh, the university needs time to review. Uh, applications and then needs time to do the interviews which I'll talk about later and then make decisions so although that seems a long way away 
applications for this next intake need to be in as soon as possible. And please listen to your staff, your consultant at Stafford, who will be advising you on this to get the documents in as quickly as you can if you want to be considered for the May intake. So it's very close now. The program itself, it's what we call a two plus two model. Two years taught, where you are going to learn everything you need to know about research. So you're going to look at six modules spaced out over those two years. <coughs> Excuse me. Now each module has a three-day. <coughs> oh dear, this is a bad time. I need a strip. So um, each module has a three-day face-to-face workshop. As we say here, bear in mind they are virtual at the moment. So they are face-to-face. -face. You're still going to be sitting in front of your computer, live with a tutor in front of you. But we're using the university's uh, what Blackboard Collaborate virtual learning system. So, it, you know, so at the moment, because of the situations we have, all workshops are going to be virtual, and that's how you're going to learn. So instead of being a classroom, it's still the same material, it's still a tutor in front of you, but we're using virtual technologies to, to, um, to conduct the workshops. Um, so they're all three-day workshop, apart from the first and the last, which are four days. So you do a block of these teaching, and then you do your various other things with your tutors, and then about three months later, you do your next module where you do various things with your tutors and carry on like that for the first two years. Once you get to the end of that two years, you will um, do what's called a transitions workshop where you transition from the taught phase to the thesis stage. And the thesis stage takes two years and there you actually have three uh, people to support you. You have a director of studies from the University of Northampton who manages the whole thesis process. So that's the person who will tell you when you need to do things and when you need to do them by. You have a first, su first supervisor who will be obviously looking at all the academic aspects of it. And that will also be a person from the University of Northampton. And then you'll have a second supervisor. And that will be somebody who has a knowledge of the context where you're in. If you're a Middle East student, it'll be somebody who has a knowledge of the Middle East. They may live here now or they've work, lived here in the past or they work here or something. Or if you're in Africa, it'll be somebody who has knowledge or has researched in the African context. So that second supervisor tries to bring that contextual information and contextual knowledge rather in. So that's how it works. Four years start to finish. Two years taught, two years to get that thesis done. There's all sorts of assessments during the facilitated modules, and your tutors will, your professors on each of these modules will tell you exactly what they want you to do. But they can be essays, seminar pre presentation and debate, portfolio, research report, reflective report, uh, and you'll end with a research proposal, a big one, and even a practice by Vivoce, which is how your thesis is assessed. So, all sorts of different assessment types. No exams, though, they're all some type of an assessment. Uh, some type of an assignment for the first two years. And then when you get to that thesis stage, you're going to construct a 40,000 word document and you are assessed with a Viva Voce examination held at the University of Northampton, although we're having to hold them virtually at the moment. Viva Voce just means oral examination. So you submit your thesis and then the oral examination with, will be with an internal examiner, which will be an, an, an examiner from the University of Northampton and an external examiner. And the external will be from a different university. All right, so that's the assessment. There are loads and loads of support on the program. There's the international DBA program leader. That's the person who looks after this program from the University of Northampton campus. And you will meet her during the interview stage. Um, every, every module has its own expert tutor. I mentioned at the thesis stage, the director of studies and two research um, supervisors. There's administration, all of the universities, uh, uh, administration and resources are all available to you. And then if you have a difficulty finding something, you can also help here locally as well. The virtual learning environment we use is called NIAL, Northampton Integrated Learning Environment. That's where you find the virtual classroom, linked to the uh, library, the uh, online library, which has millions of different documents, uh, has all uh, your lecture slides and all any materials your tutors think are useful to you. Every module has one of these sites. It's also worth noting that that's all to do with the DBA program. 
The university also has a graduate school and the whole aim of that school, as I put on the slide here, is to help out research students at the university. So not just DBA students, but research students in any of the different faculties. And so as they say here, it's a university-wide framework for training, support, career preparation, and administration to help you throughout your postgraduate research degree and early research career to achieve your potential. So this school is there to help all of the research students at the university. And something that's very useful, they have a whole, an extensive program of training courses that you can attend. And these are all in addition to your DBA workshops. Of course, they're completely free of charge for you as a student. But let's say you wanted to have more, do another training course in um, uh, quantitative analysis. You know, you got a bit confused about SCS, SPSS, which is the tool we use in quantitative analysis. In, uh, analysis. You can attend another course at the graduate school, and they have courses on how to write a literature review, research ethics, and vivo is how we uh, analyze qualitative data and many, many more. So you've got all of that support for the DBA program, but then as a researcher at the university, you've also got access to the graduate school, which has all of these extra things you can tap into. So loads of support. Let's look at some of the key things of the program. Entry requirements, you will usually hold a master's degree in a business-related subject completed within the last 10 years, ideally have a minimum of five years work experience, of le um, at least some of which should be at a senior level. And just to mention of the students we have on the program, they are very, they, the, the vast majority are at a, at a senior level. Because you need to be, be em employed in a leadership and management role capable of supporting, achieving the program learning outcomes. A lot of the taught modules will have you thinking about your own organizations and practice. So you need to be in a role where you can actually address those things. Application is fairly standard, a CV, a personal statement. In the personal statement, that's just going to be about, you know, what, why do you want to study a DBA? What's your motivation for doing that? How's it going to help you personally and professionally? Why do you want to do a DBA, not a, a PhD? Why do you want to do the Northampton DBA? Um, how will you find the time to actually do it? Because it is a long journey, a doctorate program. How are you going to you know, balance your, your time with your work and family and everything else? So that's the sort of thing you put in the personal statement. Then you'll have your usual two references, your transcripts, certificates, evidence of English language ability, only if you're asked. If you have a master's in English, for example, you're not going to be asked about that. So only if you're asked will you need to provide proof of that. And two key things are the interview and the proposal. Put them in bold because they're important. The interview is going to be with the program leader from the university and another person who will be an expert in your subject area. So if you're doing human resource management, for example, be the program leader and somebody and a human resource management person. And in that interview, they're going to ask you all about your proposal, about your CV, about your motivations for doing the program and everything else. It was an important part of the selection process. You need to know your proposal well and have really thought about it. Now bear in mind, it is a competitive admissions process. Only about 50% of people who apply will get onto the program. So you need to spend some time preparing for the interview and getting a decent proposal done as well. It's not something that can be done in an afternoon. And here's some advice for the proposal. Firstly, why do we need a research proposal before you even start the program? And here's the reasons here. The admissions team needs to be sure, well, needs, to, needs to know that you're capable of studying at doctoral level. It is a big step up for masters. The university doesn't want you, well, none of us want you starting a program unless you've got, starting a doctoral program, unless you've got every chance of succeeding. So you want to have a look, is this applicant capable of studying at doctoral level? Does the proposal, uh, proposed research fit with the nature of DBA? Remember, it's got to be practical outcomes. Then does the university have an appropriate supervisor? Now the university has supervisors in all major areas, but if you had something very specialized or very niche, it's possibility it may not be supervised. So that will be looked at at this stage. 
Just a bit more about the proposal. Can it make a practical contribution to business and management? Can the applicant reference using the Harvard system? Can they write a brief literature review and cite some authors in the field? And do you have a basic understanding of research methods? Down the bottom, I've said all business and management master's graduates should already have these skills. So it shouldn't come as anything particularly new to you doing this proposal. For fees, very fees are very reasonable. Remember, this is a taught program. It's not an online program. It's a part-time taught program. And please do have a look at the Stafford Global website for the current fees because they can change between intakes. So I want to make sure you got the highest, uh, got the latest information. Of course, you consult the Stafford. Rooksar or Mario probably can help out as well. Last couple of things from me before I have a look at the questions. Why should you do a DBA at the University of Northampton? Because it's an investment in your future, both in your academic and professional fields. The highest qualification of business and management. You'll contribute to business and management practice. It would be expected your thesis would be published. International and local supervision and support, and then workshops from your, the, the leading professors at the university. Very last thing from me, last quote if you like. Completion of the Northampton DBA will set you apart as an expert able to lead and manage at the highest levels. You'll have made a unique contribution to your field and developed outstanding analytical, critical, creative and reflective skills so needed in today's business world. It will really set you up for the very highest levels of business and management or consultancy or training or moving into universities or whatever it is that you see as the future for you. Right, how am I doing for time? I think I'm pretty good. A little bit over 20 minutes, but not at all bad. Let's take a look at those questions then. As I say, the easiest way to do this is if you type your questions in the question box there, and I can take them one by one. Let me have a look. Rightio, let me make my way down these. So the first question I've got, can this program be completed in two to three years? No, it can't. It takes four years start to finish. And you, when I often get this question at the beginning of the program, students saying, oh, can I do it a little bit faster? Trust me, once you're on the program, you need that time. You really do. There's no use trying to rush things. The main thing is passing. So you need to set yourself for those four years. Um, so the nature of the assessment, what is the word count per assignment? So I mentioned that during the presentation. Every module has a different type of assessment and will have a different type of word count. And um, it, it simply depends on, on the module and you'll be fully briefed by the tutors. So there's not a certain word count per assignment. It'll depend on, on, the, uh, on the module and what you're being asked to do. Uh, next is I completed my master's degree in engineering. Will I be accepted? We generally look for business and management master's degree holders. But if you do have, if you have done courses at work, for example, and lots of different short courses or training courses and different business and management topics, um, it would be well worth applying, and it, it would be it would be looked at and can be assessed by the admissions team. Will I be able to meet my supervisor face to face? You'll meet your supervisor face to face virtually. And I can tell you, uh, I mean, of course, you could go to the University of Northampton on campus and meet your supervisor face to face anytime you liked, of course, that would be fine. Or your local supervisor may or may not be in the same, he could be living in, in, in the same country as you are, but as I say, I'll more so be a person who who's, has knowledge of the context. So yeah, sure, I mean, by you, you could by, uh, if you wanted to, but I'm a supervisor on the program, and I can tell you that it works perfectly well uh, online because the main reason is you can get all your supervisors and your student in the same room together, uh, all together on the call, which makes it really useful. Whereas if you're meeting your supervisor, you'd have to meet your one in Northampton and then your other supervisor. Didn't. Point being, you certainly can if you want to, but it's not a, it's not a requirement for the program. Virtual virtual meetings work really well. Uh, I've been advised that the workshops are currently virtual. Yep, that's correct. What happens if I miss a session? Uh, you can't miss workshops. They're so important to the program. Now, it might be perfectly fine where you have to miss a part of a session or perhaps something, an emergency comes up before a workshop and you simply can't make that session. Now, those sorts of reasons are okay and your tutor will help you and work with you to work through that. 
but they would be exceptions. You really do need to, to attend those workshops because it's such an important part of your learning. Uh, da, da. What is the duration of each module? Uh, you'll see you, the timetable's out, so please have a look at the timetable from your consultant at Stafford. They'll send it to you where you'll see exactly when every workshop takes place. And so you have the whole timetable for the first two years, and the second two years is, is your thesis. Do you accept exemptions for this program? Okay, so this could be if somebody's done a doctoral level module somewhere else and then wants to get the exemption onto this program. We don't on this program. You need to begin from the beginning because it builds, each module builds on each other. So if you missed one, it would make it difficult to catch up. So we don't accept exemptions for this program. Um, when will the workshops resume again in the UAE? They're virtual and I, that's not something I could even begin to even guess at at the moment. At the moment they're virtual and there's just too many, it's just too much of an issue, issue traveling and everything else. But the virtual workshops very, work very well. Will my degree state online distance learning? No, it won't. Remember, it's not a, it's not an online program. Uh, it, it is a taught program. You're taught live by your tutors. That's an interesting question. Can I change my research topic halfway through my studies? Potentially you could, although most students don't. It will get a lot more refined and focused though. That's what I will say. So you might come up with your initial proposal that you submit to the admissions team, get accepted on the proposal. That proposal is likely to be quite different two years later once you've done all of the research modules, and that's fine. But most students will still be in the same sort of field or in the same sort of realm as their proposal was. But if you wanted to completely change, yeah, it would be possible, but that would be a discussion to have with the university, with the tutors, with the professors, to make sure that you're not changing, you know, that the change is a good idea for example. So there'd be a lot of support with your tutors, with your professors on the program that would guide you with that if that became possible. I've also had students before who have had an idea about what they want to do and how they want to research it. Then I've had them on the CESA stage when I've supervised them, then all of a sudden they couldn't get access to the organisation to collect data that they originally wanted to. So communication with the supervisory team and the students, we all have to come up with other ideas of how we can change that project to take into account situations like that. So things like that do happen. Uh, where am I? If I fail the interview stage, what would happen to my application? Can I apply again? The admissions team will tell you if you can apply again if, or not. If they think your proposal is just a little underdeveloped or your ideas need to be thought through, then they can say at the end, look, you've not been successful this time, but you can apply again for the next intake to give you time to further strengthen your interview, uh, your proposal, and then think further about your interview. Next question, how often do we have face-to-face -face interactions with the supervisor? So we give a guideline when you get to the thesis stage that you should meet with your supervisors every six weeks. Now that's just a guideline. Some you could meet more often if you want to, but you've got to remember at every meeting, your supervisors are gonna give you work to do, or they're gonna say, you, we, I want this done by your next meeting. So meeting any sooner doesn't help very much. You've got to have time to actually develop a document. You then send it to your supervisors, they read it, and then you meet, and then you discuss on your next step. So the thesis stage would go step by step. You meet your supervisors, they'll tell you, this is what we want you to do first. Then you'll develop work on that, send it to your supervisors, you meet again, okay, that's done, next step. So the guideline, as I say, it depends on the student, is every six weeks to meet your supervisors. Uh, last question. How much time do you estimate that the student needs to invest for the program of study per week on average? Yeah, I'm often asked this question. It really is a difficult one. It does take time. It really does. But it depends on a number of different factors. It depends on the student. Some students just seem to be able to pick things up slightly quicker than others. Others seem to have to spend a bit, bit more time and effort. And it can also depend on the module. Some people might find uh, advanced quantitative analysis, something that they need to put a lot of time into, but they might do another module where they find, they find it a bit easier, not so much of a stressful problem. So, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a very hard one to answer. 
but from talking to students, you know, if you can say sort of eight hours a week, I, I'm giving that sort of the ballpark figure. So, you know, it is achievable. Remember, everybody on this program is working in this, in, 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 everybody's working in, in, sen in mid to very senior positions. So it's the whole program is designed for people who are working in stressful jobs, who have to balance all of these things in their lives. So it is achievable and it can be done, but it will, you know, it does take an investment in time. And I think if you have in the back of your head sort of eight hours a week, that's probably a reasonable thing to think. Perfect. I have gotten through all my questions. If anything else does come to you, feel absolutely free to contact me. Also, when you, I also, I read all the proposals as they, before they're submitted as well. So if you, when you submit them to your consultant staff, that they'll always come to me first and I'll have a look over them. And if I don't think they're quite ready, I'll send them, uh, I'll give my comments and they'll go back to you to be, uh, 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 to be amended you know just to respond to my comments so you're abs um so so as i said if you have a, if you're thinking about a topic uh, you know you get something down on your proposal we it won't be submitted straight away and come to me and i'll have a look see what i think and i can send it back to you and we'll until we get a proposal that i think has the best chance of being successful of course i don't know if the admissions team are going to accept it or not but at least i can advise you so you're presenting it in the best possible way all right, thanks everyone. As I say, there's my contact details if anything does come to you anyway, and I hope I will see you on our 13th intake in May. Thanks all. Bye for now.